Now, Chris, can you tell us a bit about your mum and, and how old she was when she started using the video phone? Uh, my mum's been a very uh, fit and active lady all her life. Uh, she died a week or two ago, so you know, we've, uh, we've been celebrating her life and she didn't want us to mourn her death. She said, celebrate my life, and we certainly have done that. Um, and she's 104 uh, on November 10th. So when she moved in, she was living in this area in Springwood, New South Wales, uh, in a very nice retirement village called Buckland, uh, living there for the last 28 years. And until she was 100, she was playing golf every Monday and croquet every Tuesday and out and about doing all sorts of things. She slowed down a bit after 100. She decided to <laughs> take it easy. And then two years ago, she moved into the nursing home section of that village. Um, and we were communicating by normal phone and she was very good on her iPad. So we used the iPad a lot. Um, and then uh, when COVID hit was the uh, big, very beginning of this year and we realized that we weren't going to be able to see her as often. And so she started using this, the Connect video phone uh, in January of 2020. So she was 103 then? 103 and a bit, <laughs> she used to tell me. <laughs> yeah. So all, so all those people over 70 who say, I can't do technology, what do you say to them? <laughs> Rubbish. Rubbish. <laughs> One of the great things about this Connect thing, and I'm, by no means I have no financial interest in or anything else, I'm just very enthusiastic about this product because the difference it made to mum and to my brother and to myself, it really changed it, made a difference to our lives at a time when everything was so tough and stressful. Um, so... The, the, the brilliance of Connect and why mum could use it at 103, even as she was less and less able to use her iPad or her, and couldn't use a phone at all because of her hearing so bad, um, it was because um, it was so simple. And the guys that started this, you possibly will be talking to them, John Nikorski and Carl Grimm, pretty bright guys, and they worked out how to do this caption thing. So when mum wanted to talk to me or brother or anybody else who rang her, the left hand of the screen would be my face and the right hand of the screen would be the captions in, in big type. So she was able to read and she could talk and we could hear her and watch her and then she could see us and she could read the captions. And that was terrific. So, um, and the reason that that made it easy was when we would call her, all she had to do was the, the screen, there was a noise that she couldn't really hear, it was beeping, um, but the screen would flash and it was next to her bed facing her. So she could just reach over and touch the screen anywhere and that would answer the call. So they've simplified, the guys who designed this have simplified it down to a point where it doesn't matter whether you're 70, 80, 90 or 100, you can use it. Mum was living proof of that. So you, you mentioned that she had a bit of a hearing loss there. So they actually did some modifications and you used the version with captioning, didn't you? Yes, yes. Well, uh, hearing loss is a mild... Uh, she was deaf as a post. I mean, really, she couldn't hear. <laughs> um, until about two years ago, the hearing aids worked fairly well. And then we had hearing aids plus earphones over the hearing aids. And that also gave us a bit more. But then when this... COVID came and we weren't allowed to visit and all that, um, then she would have been cut off from the world completely. She would have been in her room because she was by that time at 103, not running around the place. You know, she'd get up in the morning, they'd shower her and put her into a chair or a bed. She must do a little bit of walking, but not much. And she mostly was um, in the bed most of the day. So uh, had she not had the connect, she would have been completely isolated and we weren't allowed to visit from first of March onwards, no personal visits at all. So she would have been totally alone. And uh, that would have been terribly distressing for her because she's quite a people person. She really enjoyed people. So, and not just my brother and myself, but the grandchildren and great grandchildren occasionally, and a couple of her very stalwart friends uh, would call her. So she had calls almost every day. Uh, well, my brother and I would call her each day, but the other people would call a few times a week. She'd have other people to talk to. And um, so that, I think that kept her alive, really. So, what, so what's impressed you the most about this video, Fine? Uh, simplicity. I think simplicity. In the early days, I, uh, when back in January, we were actually part of the beta test for it and the technology wasn't quite, you know, they were still working very hard on it. 
Um, I have to say also, sometimes I would send them a note on the weekend when something wasn't quite right, and they would either send reply on the weekend or call me. I mean, the service these guys gave was remarkable. I mean, they were just as concerned as we were to try and to, our our whole interest, my brother and myself, was keep keep mum happy and keep talking to her and keep her in touch. Um, their interest was to get this stuff up and running perfect as soon as they could, perfected as soon as they could. So, um, as I say, the level of service was terrific, and they got it down to be so simple that mum could read. There were, I think, she had ten names on her screen. She just reach over and touch the screen, and it would come alive, and all these names would be listed, and then she would touch the name, and that could, that person would be called on on Zoom, on Skype, rather. They use Skype to carry as a carrier for this. But I don't know if you've tried Skype, but I've used it in the past and you need to be pretty good. Skype's not, is not a one touch thing. You have to be able to run it a bit and overcome, you know, things don't always work so well. They have taken all the bugs out of that. Their software is brilliant. In a, it, it sorts out and understands what's, what's happening. And so all mum had to do was touch the screen to call us. And when she got a call, incoming call, just touch the screen to answer it and then touch the screen again to hang up. So she didn't have to do any technology, that's all done for her. Did you or anyone else notice any difference in her overall well-being after she started connecting with people daily? Yeah, the answer is no to that because we were able to continue. As, as the COVID thing hit, we were already up and running in the beta test of January. And by the time we got to February and March and total lockdown, um, then, uh, was able to, because let's see, in January, if I'm thinking back, being in a nursing home, which was a uh, very high uh, risk, there were, there were some terrible things happened in Sydney nursing homes, not this one, the one where she was in in Springwood was brilliant, but um, they restricted visits and my brother and I were only able to go, I think once a week and we had to go, not couldn't go to her room. We had to go to a meeting room. They would bring mum up in a wheelchair and we'd sit opposite sides of the table and talk there with the hearing aids and things on and the, and the earphones and all that. Um, so January, February, we had one visit a week and by March, they shut it down and said no visits. So it was a gradual process for us and we were able to keep in touch with her. But she was, she was happy. The once a week visit she looked forward to uh, once we could talk to her every day and, and now and then she'd call us in the morning and we'd talk in the evening. It wasn't limited. You can talk as long as you like. Um, so uh, I think it brightened her life quite a bit. She was starting, mum was quite confused about what the hell COVID is. She couldn't understand why we couldn't visit her and go and give her a kiss or a hug. That was very hard for her. It took a long time. She was watching TV all day and all the news was all about COVID all the time, but somehow it, it sort of didn't sink in. Um, the one way I got her to understand it was mum was born in 1916 and the Spanish flu thing hit when she was about 12, I think, and about uh, 20, 1928, around that time, was, was Spanish flu. She doesn't remember it now, but she remembers that her family spoke about it. And when I said, it's a bit like Spanish flu, mum, you know, it, it really affected people. A lot of people died. It was very frightening. And she, she sort of got that, but she couldn't understand, well, okay, some people have this, but why can't you give me a hug? Why can't you give me a kiss? And that was, that was a bit difficult for her. Except eventually she came to understand what that had to be, but yeah, that, that, that was tough. So if anyone's thinking about, you know, putting in a video phone like this and they think, oh, it's going to be too complicated and technical, you know, they're always too hard to set up and I don't know if my, you know, elderly relative's going to be able to manage it, <laughs> what would you say to them? Uh, don't worry about that. I mean, they have got this thing sorted out, so it is very simple. They're very helpful when you get set up. They send the, uh, the actual Connect video phone itself is a bit like a laptop computer. Uh, in the terms of size of screen, and that's I think so. It's a nice big screen, and um, it, you pull it out of the box. There's directions there, and you can get on the phone and talk to them, and they tell you how to set it up. You need to have a Wi-Fi connection, and so we had to get Wi-Fi into the nursing home in Mum's room. So we had to get Telstra in, which they were very cooperative about. They did it quite quickly, and we gave her her own Wi-Fi because she couldn't get in onto the. Uh, the nursing home Wi-Fi 
you, because that was going to perhaps interfere with it or you know that was would cause a problem they didn't want we didn't want that either so we've got our own little wi-fi for the room um and on her existing phone number so people would just call her phone number incoming dialers would just call her phone number and it would go straight up and answer from there so they didn't have to have a zoom thing or a skype thing or anything they just dial her number and she could answer so um it was simple to set up. And as I say, they were unfailingly helpful any hour of the day or night when you tried to figure it out. So you'd, we needed a technician from Telstra to go and set up the Wi-Fi. But once that was in the room, it was very simple. Uh, at the time, I was able to still visit up there back in January. And it was a very simple plug-in thing. It was not, not difficult to do. So I would think someone of advancing years, shall we say, um, you get your son or your daughter or your grandson to, to hook it up because you just, but it's, it's a very simple thing. Any kid can do that now. Uh, but the operation, once it's in, very simple, not a problem. So just to finish off with, what would your top three reasons be for that you'd recommend to somebody to, if they've got an aged relative, like living on their own at home or living in aged care, why they, oh, you think they should get one this? One more thing I need to tell you, one important thing I need to tell you that I've forgotten. Um, you can elect to have, like we had my, my particular uh, setup from home, uh, you can have one incoming caller with this system who is authorised to look in whether you answer or not. So some days, and remember I said to you the connecting was beside mum's bed, some days she wouldn't answer. And I was thinking, oh, is she okay? And after, I think, 30 seconds, it would ring, 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 and she might be asleep, she might be in the bathroom, and it would, I could then see, it would open up for me and I could see in her room, I could see her bed and see her room and I could see her there either sleeping and she was breathing, that was all I wanted to know, uh, or she, she's not in bed, so one of the nurses with her or she was in the bathroom, something like that. So that's, that's a really a, a fail-safe thing. You, you don't have to do that, but it's part of the deal that you can have one, one person authorised to look into the room whether the person answers or not. And that means if your elderly relative's in trouble, you can see it. And then uh, one time mum was coughing a lot and I wasn't happy that, that. So I called the front desk and said, she's coughing, can you please check her? And they did. And that, so that's a really good additional thing for someone who's a, a bit infirm. Um, the three things, I think keeping mum in touch with the world was really important with, with my brother and myself and other people that wanted to call her. Uh, the second thing was simplicity. Uh, it wasn't hard for her to use. And even if she was, you know, getting a bit uh, downhill and she was getting close to 104, it wasn't difficult for her to do that. And the third thing was um, the nurses learned how to use this too. So now and then if I was talking, a nurse would come in the room, I could see her and we could have a bit of a chat and so on. So, you know, it's not limited to one person, you could, whoever you want at the other end. Um, so I think... I gave my brother, and so we're one hour's drive away. We live in Sydney, she's in Springwood, it's a one hour drive. Uh, it gave us reassurance that uh, she was okay each day and we could at least talk to her and keep in touch with her. So that, that was a terrific benefit as well. Three pretty good benefits in my view. Awesome, great, thanks Chris.